Um, as already said, my name is Mike Leonard, uh, biomedical engineer from Malawi, Ilongwe. I work at the Gamma Central Hospital. That's a, a little hospital in our region. So actually, I'm a product of uh, LICO. I went for the training in 2017. Um, that was the 107th uh, session of that training in 2017. So after that, I received the proper training that uh, uh, it inspired me so that maybe I should uh, also give uh, that uh, uh, training to others. So like in 2021, uh, we started uh, are giving training to optometry students who are graduating at uh, uh, Malay College of Health Sciences. So it's, in, it's within the central region as well. So that's the background. So today we are going to share um, uh, a keratometer. It's an uh, important equipment that's being used in most settings of the ophthalmology. So a keratometer is also known as a thermometer. It's being used um, to measure the um, anterior surface of the cornea. That um, anterior surface of the cornea, there is K1 and K2. That's uh, the meridian, the vertical meridian and the horizontal meridian curvature of the anterior surface of the cornea. So the readings that we measure, it's being used to determine the degree of astigmatism of the patient, as well as uh, it's being used to calculate the IOL during the uh, cataract surgery. So let's see the working principle of uh, the keratometer. It works as a, a convex mirror of which the size of uh, uh, the size of the image being formed on the uh, convex mirror is uh, inversely proportional uh, to the to the image image size itself. So, which means the bigger the curvature, uh, the smaller the image we can get. So, by using that image. Uh, the surface uh, coverage of the cornea is being calculated by the machine we are looking up to, we are talking about now, which is keratometer. So basically, the keratometer, there are in two categories. We have a uh, manual keratometer and uh, uh, auto keratometer. But in this session, we'll go much on a manual keratometer. So the manual keratometer has major three systems, which is optical, mechanical, and electrical system. So we'll look one by one. On optical system, that's the arrangement. If you can open, the, if you open the, the, the equipment, you will see this arrangement of optical system. We have an eyepiece there. There is doubling lens. We have uh, objective lens. There is reflecting mirror. And then we have myers in this and the, the, the equipment. So these uh, uh, optical system, that's make up that uh, equipment. That's what you can expect when you open inside. Yeah, so we have an electrical system composed of mainly four parts, which is a power cable. There is on and off switch bump and also the reflecting mirror inside. Let's uh, look at uh, the mechanical and other parts of the manual kratometer. On mechanical parts, we have uh, the elevating knob it's being used to lift the, the whole machine up or down. There is focusing knob. The, it helps the machine to move uh, forward or backwards in order to focus on the patient's eye. We have also the locking uh, knob. 
being used. Uh, when the machine is not being in use, we need to lock machine just to secure the machine. And um, we have also the rotating grip axis. It's mechanical in nature also. We have uh, these rotating drums that are being used to measure the amount of uh, um, the curvature of the cornea in order for you to focus the myers inside. So there are two drums. This is uh, for uh, horizontal, if I'm not mistaken. The other one is for vertical uh, meridian to measure the curvature of the cornea. So others, they're just other parts of the uh, keratometer, like uh, rotating axis. There is a leveling side. We have uh, another part there, which is a model of time being used for calibration. There is head rest and chin rest. So those are the main uh, mechanical parts and the other parts of the, of the manual cratometer. So let's look at uh, how we can calibrate the, the, the cratometer. So calibration is being done so that we should have uh, accuracy in, in our measurements of the surface of the cornea, the curvature that is. So there are some steps to be followed before uh, carrying out uh, calibration. First of all, you need uh, uh, to focus, properly focus the eyepiece inside. And then uh, you press uh, the model of the eye in front of the, uh, of the machine. This is the, the model of the eye. And then um, after focusing, you obtain the, the Myers image of the model of the eye. The Myers should be clear. And then uh, you verify that uh, the values of the horizontal and vertical uh, drum leadings with the non model of the of the of the, of the cornea. So in case maybe you have found that uh, the readings you have on the horizontal or vertical drum readings are different with the model of the cornea, because the model of the cornea has a known values. So you equate them. If you find it different, and then there is a need for you to calibrate the machine. So. When you want to do calibration, because you have already focused, and then you need to loosen the, the drum, the rotating drum. Let's go back first. This is the rotating uh, drum to focus on the model of the eye. If you find it different, you need to loosen the screw there, and then you align, uh, which will be equal the readings of the of the model of the eye. So if you do that and then you tighten the screw, uh, then you are done with uh, the calibration at that side. Uh, that is for horizontal. For the vertical one, you do the same thing. Sorry. You do the same thing for the horizontal one. So after fixing the drum correct at a, in a correct position and tighten the screw, you need to verify again uh, with the different models of the of the cornea or multiple times in the same model if you have one model that is. So let's go to care and maintenance of a uh, keratometer. You have to clean outside of the surface. You need slightly with moist cloth. Uh, if there is dust, you can blow it first and then clean the eyepiece and the other optical surfaces using cotton swabs. Okay. Again, don't touch your, uh, the optics with your fingers because you leave bare fingers there. The hands, it will lessen the clarity of the, of the machine. Uh, you can clean the lubricating parts with uh, lubrication spray. In Africa, uh, particularly in Malawi, we actually use uh, the WD-40. That's the best. 
have, we don't have Zoric here. The lubricating parts, uh, lubric uh, you can lubricate the moving parts with a grease or oil, which is single oil. And the check all functions, if they are working uh, properly or not. And again, you need to check a calibration as we already discussed. So you need to cover the instrument whenever it's not in use to avoid impacts. So let's look at the problems we might face uh, with this uh, equipment. Uh, first of all, if the, the equipment is not working, you need to see if it's in off position or not. If it's off, then you need to turn it on. Uh, the plug is not connecting properly, might be the reason of not working. Uh, the power supply, if there is no power supply, you can't use the machine. And also the power cable may not be good enough, maybe to, for continuity. So you need to check all those connections. Um, on the same problem of not working, might be the main switch failure. You need to check the continuity of the main switch. The bulb blown off, can't bring light there. So you need to check the bulb itself. If it's in good condition, maybe the contacts of the bulb are not good. You need to clean them and then replace. So the myers might have, the machine is working, but you can't get clear myers in the machine. The, the possible reason might be a black and or white bulb. It can't bring uh, uh, the clear image. Uh, the bulb, and then you, you need to replace the, the bulb. The bulb is not seated properly. You need to check, and then you replace it uh, properly. Dusting optics, you need to clean. As the uh, prof already explained how to clean the optics, to follow the same thing. There's a bulb or refracting coat is not good. You need to check if there is a need for replacement or maybe cleaning. Refracting mirror, coating are not good. You need to replace. On this uh, problem, you need a biomedical engineer to do that. So in error in reading, you need uh, to do calibration as we discussed already. So that's the end of our session on keratometer. If there is any question, 